G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Just before I get into the video, a quick announcement. I am going to be live on Twitch with my boy Mystic Man. We're going to be covering the War Thunder League Grand Finals. We're going to be casting them, and it is going to be on Mystic's channel. That is twitch.tv slash mysticman underscore. I'll put the link in the description below and in the comments, so come and join us. Um, I'll try and be in chat. You'll get to see a couple of uh, really, really interesting players. And some absolutely crazy plays. Like some of the things that we've covered is absolutely phenomenal. There are some, there's some real talent in this game, and uh, this is a great example of it. I I definitely recommend that you come along and watch. Anyways, onto the gameplay. We're gonna have a look at the MiG-17, and this particular battle starts off really, really poorly. Actually, I I haven't played the MiG-15 or or the MiG-17 or anything with this sort of weird configuration of cannons for a very, very long time. Uh, probably about a period of six months. The last time would have actually been around January. So it's been a good six months since I've touched anything with this configuration of cannon. And honestly, it's it's kind of weird. This configuration involves a, a couple of 23mm cannons, which are quite low in velocity, and a 37, which is also very low in velocity. Both of these sets of cannons, well the three cannons, they sit on the bottom of the fuselage on either side of the nose. And so what you get is you get a really, really weird set of guns. You, it, It's really, really hard to aim them, especially at long range. And if you haven't had good practice with them, it's really, really tough. And this is exactly what I'm going to face. But in advance, I understand that I am going to be rusty. So what I do is I conserve my ammunition. One of the things that you have to realize when you're in a MiG-15 or a MiG-17 is you have to conserve your ammunition. You shouldn't ever spray. You can't do it. You, you can't. You can't spray like you can in a, in a saber. You have to be very conservative. You shouldn't fire more than three 37s at any one time. If you're doing more than that, you should take a step back, refocus yourself, and go again. Now, what am I doing here? I'm employing my usual strategy, which is a rush tactic. Now, the reason why you rush in a vehicle like the MiG-17, the F-2 Sabre, and in fact, any F-86, any MiG, up, in fact, almost any jet, is that you get your best performance while flying in a straight line. You don't get it by climbing like a prop because a jet gets more speed the more it has. So, it's basically, it, the, it is a lot better to rush than it is to climb like a prop because you're not gaining speed. In jets, the name of the game is speed, and if you can keep your speed up, even if you're a slow jet, if you can keep your speed up, you have a better chance at winning, especially if you are like a MiG-17. Now, the MiG-17 may not be the fastest jet in the game, uh, but in this case, it is one of the faster jets at this battle rating. In fact, I'm in a down tier. And what you can see is that by keeping my speed, I'm able to not only outrun the opponents, but I'm also able to keep my energy. And one of the things that the MiG-17, and in fact any jet, needs is energy. The way you get energy in jets is by speed, not by altitude. Because a jet can reach its top speed very, very easily in a, a level flight on the deck. It doesn't need the altitude. The only time you would ever go for altitude in a, in a plane like the MiG is if you're fighting a Sabre one-on-one, -on -one, and you want to take it to your altitude. Because you have a slight edge over the saber, but you still get your best performance on the deck at sea level. Certain jets do perform better at high altitude, for example the Horton 229. However, I would still advise that you go and gain all of your speed, because you can essentially put all of your performance to work that way a lot more effectively in the scheme of the battle. And not only that, your other friendly jets will likely be on the deck as well. To top that off, uh, the props that you'll be facing and some of the other jets perform better at medium altitude. So if you can keep them at low altitude and not force them at those, those medium altitude engagements, you can actually benefit your team and benefit yourself really, really well. So this rust strategy that I've employed has pretty much found no one, so I've had to go and look for these cougars. Now, these cougars are slower than me, but they will turn better than me below a certain, ooh, around a certain threshold. Now, I have an A5 Sabre that is coming in, so I'm going to need to keep my speed up. The A5 can outturn me, so I need to keep my speed and my energy up. Now, 
The A5 has worse energy retention than the MiG-17, so what I can do is, if I'm in a pinch, I can go into a slight vertical. Not a, not a, not a massive vertical, but as long as there are no enemy jets around, I need to look carefully for that, I can keep my advantage by maintaining speed and maintaining my energy advantage. Now you can see here that I've actually managed to redline, and I'm actually catching this F9F and trying to save this A5 Sabre. There's also another F9F close in the vicinity, so I put my nose up a little bit so I don't compress. Now obviously, the only reason why, you, why I would want to go up in this case is to drop speed, but at the same time retain some energy. This is so that I can go and re-engage a dive, but at the same time it allows me to engage this, this uh, F9F. I miss my shots again, only taking a couple of shots at a time, and then I continue with a horizontal, a flat turn, to re-engage, simply to keep my speed up. If I were to go into a vertical turn, I would be bleeding more speed and letting this guy get away, and that's not what I want to do. Another F9F comes in, and I go for the vertical straight away, because I know that I have better energy retention than the F9F Cougar, and in some cases the F9F Panther, especially if you keep your speed. If you are at your maximum speed and the Cougar is at his maximum speed, then you will always outclimb them because you just have that much more energy to play with. I try and go for another shot here, and essentially what I'm doing now is a vertical turn fight. The F9F will beat me in a vertical turn fight, uh, in, a, in a horizontal turn fight, so I have to take it into the vertical because I know that I have more speed and I have better energy in this case because I've been using my energy correctly. If I'd been climbing like a prop, Chances are he would have been able to get me because I'm at a lower speed and the MiG-17 needs a little bit of speed in this battle rating to thrive. I missed some more shots, but that's okay. I can just go back into the vertical, convert my altitude, or my, my speed in this case, into altitude because I'm better at doing that than the, the F9F. The F9F goes for a re-engage, but because I've built up enough speed over time, I'm able to put this fight into the horizontal using a little bit of flaps, keeping my vertical speed, and I'm actually able to pretty much rope-a-dope this F9F. Again, I miss my shots because I'm a potato, but that's okay because I can just keep going vertical and there's nothing this cougar can do because I have energy trapped him so bad and he's just focused me down, or he's uh, had a hard-on for me, let's say, and he's tunnel-visioned. This is exactly how you deal with enemies that are better turning with you in jets. In most cases, uh, for example, with the with the case of, say, Ven the Venom or the Cougar, you're able to energy trap them a lot of the time because you're just able to pull more speed in general. So there goes my very first kill of the match. And it's really, really late into the game. In fact, we're already seven and a half minutes. We're almost at the eight-minute mark, actually. And there we go with my first kill. This is going to be one hell of a weird match. Most of my team has perished because they're just not using their planes correctly, or they're, you know, crashing, going, taking head-ons that they shouldn't. And what I've got here is a really weird situation. I have a Yak-23, an A5 Sabre, and I believe a, a an FJ-4. Now, these guys can all turn better than me. The Yak-23 probably has better energy retention than me. And the A5 Sabre and the FJ are definitely better at low speed than me. The A5 and the FJ can keep up with me, but I don't want to turn this into a running engagement. Now, the A5 goes for a last-minute head-on. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. This is so annoying. You're only going to damage yourself. It's very, very risky, and it's just really, really crazy. It's it's insane. You either... Like, this is, this is just how you get yourself killed. You don't go into last-minute head-ons because you'll just risk losing your plane. Especially in jets, especially at a range of less than a thousand meters, you're really, really risking your plane, and it's just so annoying having to deal with with players that really like this strategy. It's just, it's just frustrating. Now, here I am in an engagement with an A5 Saber, and what have I done? Put it into the vertical. The A5 Saber has probably got the drop on me because I've been using my energy poorly. I have been turning, and I've been uh, putting myself up into little verticals trying to go for, say, the FJ and the Yak-23, but at the end of the day, the A5 still has worse energy retention than the MiG-17. I'm able to, with some flaps, 
basically stall fight this guy. And the only reason why I'm using air brakes in this situation is to try and minimize the distance that I cover so that I can get a shot on this A5. And lo and behold, I managed to sit behind him. I go for the shot and I miss. Actually, I spark. And that is one of the things that I have had a little bit lately with the MiG-17. I spark again. Rather frustrating because I could have had a kill there and then. It could have been really nice. But unfortunately, that's not the way it goes. Now, I'm in, I'm pretty much locked in a turn fight with the A5. He's able to sort of keep with me for this little bit. And I put myself up into the vertical again. I'm using flaps. I'm trying not to use my air brake because I want to keep my energy as much as possible. And now I finally have some energy over this guy because he's been vertical turn fighting me in a MiG-17. And I have the drop on him. You can see me here potatoing some shots. I'm really, really not used to this cannon, but I managed to get a critical hit. Seven rounds remaining of my uh, 37. And I can see by that shadow that it looks like he's starting to get close to the ground. And there he goes. I don't have to put any more bullets in, so I'm not going to need them. Now I'm in a little bit of a predicament. As you can see earlier on in the game, the F F86 F35 crashed. That put me in a 1v4 situation. So I have to 1v4 clutch this game to win. There's an IL-28 chasing me down, and I don't think he's going to be, uh, he's he's going to give up. He's, he's there's no way. Uh, judging by his name, he probably doesn't speak English as well, uh, and there's no point telling him, hey, I'm basically out of ammo, I'm going to land and, and rearm. So, I've got to sort of stick this out. Not only that, but there's another guy behind me in a B-57. So, I have two bombers to deal with, and they both have frontal guns. This is an IL-28 SH as well, so <laughs> we're looking at a weird predicament here. So I'm trying to just trying to keep my speed up. I evade the IL-28. He's still really going for me, super, super horny for me. And I take it into the vertical a little bit. This plane is strangely maneuverable, but it can't really get its shots on target. I have played it with the gun pods, and it is really, really unwieldy. The B-57 puts himself in a weird spot. I think he's drained all of his energy somehow. And uh, I managed to get... Hits. I love these guns, man. They're just... This is exactly what I don't need. I I need better hits, man. Did they nerf the 37? I, f I feel like they did. They nerfed the 37 and the 23s. They they should feel a lot meatier. There are, there are several reports by uh, Korean War pilots where they say... Uh, if you got yourself behind a MiG-15, and this is in F-86A5s as well, uh, that you would be pretty much gone in, a, in one or two shots. So, that's fine. For now, I've managed to secure myself a B-57 kill. It looks like he's going down. I've taken off his tail, and that leaves me two more. There's the IL-28. So, at this point, I have barely any ammunition. My fuel is still okay because I decided to take 20 minutes. I figured taking 20 minutes would be the smarter option. Because I'm basically playing this plane for speed. And in the case that I get up-tiered, I'm probably going to need the endurance because F-100s and MiG-19s are pretty, pretty tough. Uh, and, you know, one of their weaknesses is sometimes if they take low fuel, then I'm able to clutch it out by just enduring longer than them. So, I have this IL-28 who's still running for me. And I have no other option other than to take cover by my AA because I don't have any ammunition left. I refuse to die especially to an IL-28SH, and there's just honestly not a whole lot that I can do until I land and get some ammunition. So, this IL-28 decides he's going to strafe out the AA, and I need to do something to distract him, because if he takes out all of the AA, then I have no cover as I go to land. One of the issues I found with uh, jets is sometimes, even if you have no low ammunition, uh, people will, even if you say, hey, uh, you know, let me go and land, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna go and grab some ammunition and, and then we can get back and have a nice fight. Some people will let you go and do that, or they'll say they'll let you go and do that, and then they'll just strafe you anyway. So it's really, really hard to run off a gentleman's agreement with base AA, because some people will also go and camp it when they say, hey, I'm just gonna go back and rearm. Uh, and I've, I've had both situations. Uh, I, I really, really don't appreciate people who cower behind their AA. In this case, I have no ammunition, so I don't have a choice, and I really don't like doing it. But anyway, the IL-28 gets shot down by AA and uh, goes to land in the sand. So that allows me to go in RTB. This Yak-23 
again, not going to listen to me. So what I do is I land. I have no damage, so I can bail out. And it'll let me rearm and repair instantly. So I jump back in. And that's one of the tricks that you can use. Sometimes it lets you do that, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, this Yak-23 really, really must have some sort of hard-on for me as well. Because he turns right around and he goes for the strafe again. Now, I have no sympathy for people who get shot down trying to do this. Uh, unless the person has been an absolute asshole and has camped the entire game or you know, has, has done something pretty pretty nasty. So one of the things that I propose that Gaijin does is put a timer on AA. What I think should happen is AA should activate for three minutes until you leave the area or until the area uh, vacates, I guess. What, you, what should happen is it should give you a three minute timer within a five kilometer radius of the airfield for you to land, repair, and get back into the air. Once that three minute timer has elapsed, then the AA should completely stop working. Un unless maybe they add, uh, say, small ground fire, uh, as well as the big big Chungus artillery. But uh, this should stop people who, uh, you know, want to strafe and be an arsehole, but it also stops people who want to camp and be an arsehole as well. Because three minutes is enough for you to land and repair, but three minutes is not enough for you to camp and win the game. In this case... I have been uh, pretty critically damaged. I could have died, and that would have been the 1v4 clutch lost. So I'm trying to land here. I'm trying to sort of get back into the sky. It looks like the Yak-23 has uh, returned back to his base, and eventually he's going to crash, which leaves me with a measly three kills, but at the same time leaves me with the victory in the 1v4. So you know what? I think I'll take that, but it re I really, really don't appreciate them having strafed my airfield. You know, in this case, I'm earnestly landing, repairing, looking for dogfights. I know some people like to abuse that, and often that happens. And that's why I think having a three-minute countdown timer, which, uh, heavily, which heavily protects you, and then after that three-minute timer doesn't protect you at all with, say, a five, ten-minute cooldown, I think that would work the best. And I think that would be a good middle ground to both allow people who genuinely need to to do so, and to prevent campers and to prevent strafers. Anyway, ladies and gents, I hope to see you on Twitch. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.